Looking for a classic Hollywood gem that's full of humor, shock, and heartache? Check out the 1948 movie, State of the Union. It's a blend of wit and drama that keeps you hooked. Wondering who your favorite classic Hollywood actor is in this movie? Stick around and find out. So, when did you first watch State of the Union? Whether it's your first time or a trip down memory lane, this film is sure to leave an impression. As you dive into the world of State of the Union, get ready for a roller coaster of emotions. From funny moments to shocking twists, this movie has it all. Now, we want to hear from you. What's your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the movie? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. We can't wait to hear from you. Keep watching for more interesting facts about this timeless classic. Stay tuned for more, and remember, the best is yet to come. Released in 1948, the movie State of the Union made waves and left a lasting impression on popular culture. It gained attention for its engaging story and strong performances, captivating audiences with its exploration of political themes and marital complexities. The movie sparked discussions about politics and relationships, resonating with viewers and prompting reflection on portrayed values and principles. Following its success, State of the Union inspired spin-offs, adaptations, and merchandise, becoming sought-after collectibles among fans. Additionally, adaptations in other mediums, such as stage productions and radio dramas, kept the spirit of the film alive and introduced it to new audiences, ensuring its relevance for years to come. State of the Union's influence on popular culture is undeniable, shaping conversations about politics and relationships. Its ability to connect with audiences and inspire adaptations underscores its lasting significance. State of the Union, a movie from 1948, is important in Hollywood history. It's interesting to note that Angela Lansbury missed the last day of filming Murder, she wrote in 1984 because she was very emotional. Her mother, Alice, lived for a long time and passed away in 1973 at the age of 99. In 1970, Lansbury appeared as Reuben Kincaid's mother in an episode of The Partridge Family. These stories give us a peek into Angela Lansbury's career and life, showing moments of emotion and long life. State of the Union is still an important part of her work in movies. State of the Union, a movie from 1948, features a villain portrayed by an actress who contrasts sharply with her on-screen persona. She was known as Maggie and was admired by those she worked with for her charm, friendliness, and humor. Alongside her acting career, she was involved in political activities. In 1944, she attended the Democratic National Convention. Additionally, in the same year, one of her colleagues, Menju, partnered with Walt Disney to establish the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals, a staunchly anti-communist organization. The movie, despite its political undertones, remains memorable for its portrayal of characters and the talents of its cast and crew. State of the Union is a notable 1948 movie. It was inducted into the Connecticut Women's Hall of Fame in 1994. The lead actor was offered the role of the Penguin in the TV series Batman before Burgess Meredith. He mentioned he would only accept the role if he could kill Batman. Interestingly, as of 2009, he is one of six performers who won a Golden Globe Award as Best Lead Actor in a Motion Picture Drama without being nominated for an Oscar for the same role. Others include Anthony Franciosa, Omar Sharif, Shirley MacLaine, Jim Carrey, and Kate Winslet. In the 1948 movie State of the Union, pundits wrongly predicted Truman's loss in the presidential election, famously showcased when Truman held up a newspaper with the premature headline Dewey Beats Truman. Despite this, Truman won by a significant margin of almost 3,000 votes. The movie highlights the unpredictability of politics and the surprises it can bring. The actor's performance as Eleanor of Aquitaine in The Lion in Winter is highly regarded, ranking 13 on Premier Magazine's 100 Greatest Performances of All Time. This underscores her talent and versatility as an actress, showcasing her ability to embody diverse roles over her career. In another instance, she was reunited with a former co-star, Glynis Johns, in an episode of Murder, she wrote, nearly three decades after their collaboration in The Court Jester. This reunion speaks to the lasting connections forged in the entertainment industry and the joy of working together again after many years. State of the Union sheds light on the complexities of politics, while the actress's performances across different roles underscore her talent and enduring appeal in the world of cinema and television. State of the Union, released in 1948, features an understudy of Gene Kelly from the Broadway show Pal Joey. 
Prior to the film, the actress, after marrying Ludlow Ogden Smith in 1928, required him to adopt the names Ogden Ludlow, as she objected to the name Catherine Smith due to the existence of another well-known radio singer named Kate Smith. Additionally, she declined the role of Kitty Foyle in a 1940 film, which was later portrayed by Ginger Rogers, who won the Best Actress Oscar for her performance. In the movie State of the Union, there's an interesting actor named Tor Johnson. He played two different characters known as Lobo in other films. One Lobo, who couldn't speak, was in Bride of the Monster and Night of the Ghouls. The other, Lobo Roman II, could talk and appeared in The Unearthly. Tor Johnson was proud of this distinction. Loretta Johnson, who was the mother of one of the actors in the movie, was born in Tremont, Pennsylvania in February 1893 and passed away in January 1978 in Palo Alto, California. The actress Angela Lansbury, who was also in the film, spent her early years in London before moving to Mill Hill and later spending weekends on a farm near Wallingford, Oxfordshire. This information was State of the Union is a 1948 movie directed by Frank Capra. In 2003, a Scott Berg released the book Kate Remembered, shedding light on the life of Catherine Hepburn, who played one of the lead roles in the film. Interestingly, Stanley Kramer, the director of Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, named his daughter Catherine after Hepburn, who was her godmother. Hepburn had expressed a strong desire to play the role of Alma Weinmiller in Summer and Smoke, which was eventually portrayed by Geraldine Page. Despite her aspirations, Hepburn's involvement in State of the Union and her impact on cinema remains noteworthy. In 1948, State of the Union, a notable film, saw its release. Although she often stated that Alice Adams was her favorite role, it was her portrayal as Mary Tyrone in Long Day's Journey into Night that she deemed her greatest cinematic achievement. Despite their close relationship, Catherine Hepburn, his longtime companion, chose not to attend his funeral, respecting his family's wishes. It was Rosalind Russell who aided him in overcoming his fear of live audiences by encouraging him to perform in nightclubs. Subsequently, he debuted in Las Vegas during the 1950s. In 1948, a film titled State of the Union hit the screens, featuring a noteworthy performance from an actress who later gained prominence in various roles. This actress, who also portrayed Coco Chanel in Coco and Eleanor of Aquitaine in The Lion in Winter, faced a significant challenge during her career. While playing the Wicked Witch in The Wizard of Oz, she suffered severe burns due to a mishap during a special effects scene. Despite this setback, she returned to the set after recovering, setting a condition to avoid further fire-related stunts. These incidents offer a glimpse into the challenges faced by actors behind the scenes, showcasing their resilience and dedication to their craft. State of the Union remains an important piece of cinematic history, highlighting both the triumphs and trials of its cast and crew.